Well, we're digging out some old footage for this Wednesday's show. Oh, okay. Because, you know, uh, we've been sorting through old tapes up in the attic. And, yes. Uh, what's on this and what's on that? And we keep finding fun things. I found uh, the footage that I shot in a place called uh, um, Heritage Park. No. Oh. Uh, what was it called? Um, and anyway, they had, I think it was Heritage Park, the High Country Railroad oh. <laughs> in Golden, Colorado. Wow. And it was a two-foot gauge railroad with steam locomotives. They had four steam locomotives. And it was just really fun and really neat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it evolved over time from one thing into another. But I found this old footage from 90, no, 86. Wow. 1986 when they were, and, and there was a guy that had a shay and he kept his shay on this railroad mm -hmm. and a two foot gauge shay and what a neat little engine and he let us just take it and screw around. Oh, so it's Greg Hardy here and Mike Niederhauser uh -huh. and me. I'm uh -huh. actually hanging uh -huh. off the locomotive in places. Don uh, Schaefer and uh, <laughs> just a bunch of the train guys and they just let us take their shay and screw around with it. How fun. So we did. Yeah. <laughs> so check this out two-foot gauge Shea on the High Country Railroad. Well, Heritage Square was originally called Magic Mountain. I guess they had to change their name after the, the other Magic Ma I don't know how that happened. But they changed their name to Heritage Square, and the original railroad was a three-foot gauge, and the locomotive was Rio Grande Southern number 42, a consolidation. That locomotive had been part of the collection at the Narrow Gauge Motel, had been purchased by Robert Richardson. It was the last operating steam locomotive on the Rio Grande Southern before it was dismantled. At any rate, at some point, uh, the Narrow Gauge Motel decided to sell that locomotive to Ed Gerlitz. Subsequently, uh, Ed couldn't keep it running and started buying all of these two-foot gauge locomotives and converted the railroad over to two-foot and eventually sold that locomotive to the Durango and Silverton. That locomotive is on display in Durango right now in the Durango Silverton's museum. Not restored, but beautiful nonetheless. At any rate, Ed started buying up these two-foot gauge locomotives. Uh, this train is being pulled by two European two-foot gauge locomotives, and they were kind of the backbone of this operation. Now the uh, goofy locomotive on the railroad is this little Climax. It was brand new when I shot this video in 1986. It was built just for this railroad, and it was actually built out of a boat a steam launch. All of that equipment was brand new. It was actually a kit that you could buy for building your own steam launch and it came with a boiler and a single cylinder steam engine and so on. And well, it didn't necessarily have to be turned into a boat, did it? So instead, uh, this little Climax was constructed and the marine engine mounted on it. There was a whole bunch of us uh, from Salt Lake City who'd gone over to the Narrow Gauge Convention in 1986, and several of them are riding on the Climax here. We've got Don Schaefer over here grinning in the dark green shirt, and Sam Goodwin in the light green shirt. Not long after all of this, the whole operation went bust and all this track was torn up but it was relayed in 15-inch gauge as a, an estate railroad. Now, the flagship of the railroad was this beautiful little locomotive, a two-foot gauge construction shay. Would have been used in highway construction and that sort of thing. It had the most unusual valve gear little teeny Shea locomotive and this really delicate three-cylinder engine on the side of it. But I'd just never seen uh, anything quite like this. Very, very unusual valve gear. The 
little locomotive had developed a really nasty rod knock and so they didn't want to use it in regular service. So they were just running a light engine up and down one of the side tracks here. And people who were attending the narrow gauge convention in 1986 were able to come over here on this particular day and enjoy the hospitality of the little railroad. Little did they know that the lunatic fringe from Salt Lake City was going to show up and, well, essentially hijack their little locomotive. Well, they foolishly decided to just sort of let us steal the locomotive and screw around with it. Oh, no. We did. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Sam Goodwin at the throttle. I don't think he'd ever driven anything larger than like a Volkswagen Beetle until right here. But he did okay. He didn't break the engine. <laughs> And here's our good friend Greg Hardy. Oh my. We were just on that lovely caboose hop with him. Uh, he was a bit younger. Yes, and I also see a Hawaiian shirt. Well, I used to <laughs> like Hawaiian shirts back then. and you still do. Uh, so there I was riding the engine with Greg running and Mike Niederhauser on camera. Oh my gosh. Now, I'm not actually trying to pull the whole shea over on top of me here. It's just that I was so fascinated by the mechanism of this thing that I found by leaning completely out I could watch all of the gears go around and study the way that interesting valve gear worked and I was just having a ball. You'd have felt uh, silly if you'd have tipped the little train over on its side. I damn near did. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I damn near fell off it. That's what actually happened. <laughs> At the end of the day, sadly, I was the only one who hadn't actually driven the thing. I spent so much time studying it, I never got any throttle time. Well, I'm glad there wasn't rattlesnakes in the floorboards. <laughs> there could have been. <laughs> we had that little incident. <laughs> oh, here we have uh, Don Schaefer at the throttle. Uh, he seemed to be quite comfortable at it, but I don't think he'd ever run a steam engine either. Now here we actually have a real live honest to god locomotive engineer at the throttle. Who? Niederhausen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he doesn't run steam locomotives, but at this time he was running freight trains uh -huh. for the Denver and Rio Grande. Uh, subsequently switched over to Amtrak. He's now locomotive engineer on the California Zephyr. Uh, there he and is. And Adam Pinalis is conductor on the same train. So yes. how about that? How about that? But here he is doing what he There's does naturally, Mike. driving the locomotive. Just not usually a steam locomotive. Or such a serious look. Oh yeah, he takes his uh, steam locomotive driving very seriously. Occasionally Mike had been engineer on the Rio Grande Zephyr before oh. the Thistle Slide. Right. You remember oh, the Thistle Slide. Oh, I remember slide. the Thistle Slide. But after that, of course, there was no Rio Grande Zephyr. Well, what a grand day out we had. You had some fun. And I love uh, clomping down memory lane in my galoshes. <laughs> I look a little silly doing it, but it's well, just an enormous amount of fun of revisiting the these. Oh, there's Doug Jolly. Hi, Doug. But uh, what a fun, 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 fun day we had on the High Country Railroad back in 1986. Wow. So there that is, that's the two foot gauge Shea on the High Country Railroad. And I asked Jim Trowbridge, yes. uh, whose railroad we were on a week ago or yeah. whatever it was, um, about what happened to that railroad. I know it's long gone. Right. And he gave me the whole rundown on that and it's fascinating. It, oh. it got torn up and turned into a three foot gauge railroad. Okay. And then eventually developers took the whole thing over and now it's all mansions and oh, stuff. Geez. The whole amusement park had all went away. 
But apparently it went through a period of time after the two foot gauge railroad was torn up that it was relayed as a three foot gauge railroad. And then eventually it just went away. And the whole thing was about that far away from the uh, Colorado Railroad Museum wow. at Golden, Colorado. That's awesome. So it's a shame it's gone, yeah. but how neat that it was there at all for a while. Mm -hmm. And we got to go screw around with it, nice. which was key. <laughs> Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel, watch the 230, I don't know what it is. Oh, it's man. a lot of movies. Yeah, I can't keep track. No. Anyway, get on over there and binge watch. Yeah. Just, you know, carve out a day, exactly. call in sick and binge watch all 200 or whatever, however much you can stomach. <laughs> Otherwise you won't just be <laughs> calling in sick, you'll actually be sick. Anyway. Anyway, do pop over there and do subscribe. Yes. We love to have people subscribe and the best way to subscribe is by clicking on the infamous blue button, which will be appearing momentarily. Okay, zoink that blue button right there. Now when you get over to the channel, there's a little bell icon. You click on the bell icon and you can set up your notifications and then you'll be notified whenever we upload a movie. Yes which generally is a couple of times a week. Right. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here in a few days with some more massive screwing around. See ya. See you then. Bye-bye.